Hi, I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, and today I'll be answering some questions, uh, particularly a problem with a network drive that won't connect after an upgrade for Windows 10. Particularly, uh, I've seen a lot of strange little behaviors after the 20H20 update uh, late 2020, early 2021 with Windows 10. So if you're connecting to a NAS, a SAN, a server, whether it's in a domain or using from home, for example, remotely through a VPN, you might be encountering some problems. Particularly what's happening is you have a network drive, it's been there, it's been mapped, so you have a, an, a, an assigned letter to it, and all of a sudden you try to connect to it one day, you've just rebooted, and you're getting a message saying that the local device name is already in use, and lo and behold, you can't connect to it. So if you find these videos useful, this particular video uh, is helping you out, give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. It really helps us out and we appreciate the support. So let's go take a quick look. So for those of you unfamiliar with drive mapping, what you would do is if you uh, right click on this PC and you say map network drive right here, this is where you could go and map something. So usually you select a letter. So let's say it was a public folder and the way it works is you type in exactly as below where it says server. In my case, um, let's say I've got a NAS and I could go and type in public like this. And what that would do is actually, I believe that I've got some ISOs on here. So let's do this. And what it would do is basically allow me to see the drive there. Now, obviously I can click on it. I can go and see what's in there and so forth. It is working. If it did not work, then what I would do is I would actually be seeing this message. So this is fresh off the press. I had someone this morning who had this problem. And uh, so I did a screen capture and this is what it looks like. So it tells you, in this case, I used the letter P in my example. They had a letter Q and that's the name of the server and the name of the share. And all of a sudden it's saying the local device name is already in use. Traditionally, or what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to go and ask you for a username and a password if it forgot what it is. And in this case, you're just getting a message. You just aren't connected. So how can we counter this? Well, there's a few things. Uh, what I found is some of the settings in Windows 10 might have been reset by an upgrade. Um, if that's the case, then we can certainly go and take a look around. Um, so let's go through a list. First, uh, obviously you can go ahead and disconnect the drive that is not working. You do that by clicking on it. So right click and say um, disconnect here and click on disconnect. And it says, are you sure you want to uh, disconnect? Say yes. And hopefully it just disconnects and it goes that may not be the case. If that is not the case, you could also try with PowerShell. Let's just go ahead and enter PowerShell as administrator. Okay, I seem to have opened it more than once, but let's go have a quick look. All right, so one of the things that you can do in these commands, I understand some of you are less uh, familiar or less comfortable with this. There really is uh, nothing too dramatic in what we're doing today. There's nothing terribly uh, out there and complicated. So let's just go ahead. If you'll forgive my, my head being on the side here for a moment is we're going to go ahead and you can do a net start or actually a net stop. In our case, we need to, we would stop the computer browser because sometimes it's stuck and sometimes it is the computer browser that would get stuck so what you would do is you run this and that would stop the browser and it simply stops the service and then we'll have to start it again so that's the first thing to try see if that resolves it and then what I do, you can do is you can press this arrow up basically it just retypes the last command in this case I would go and click on start uh, rather type in start, what am I saying clicking? Um, so, so I've redone that, then I would check if that doesn't work, then we start moving into other uh, problems that it might be. One of the other things you can look at is one of the key entries in the registry editor and you get into the registry editor by going to the bottom, typing reg edit. So that will get you into the registry editor. And so what we want is the local machine. At that point, you wanna go into uh, system, and then we're going to go into current control set and then we're going to go under control and under control we're going to find the session manager 
which should be session session manager right here. And one of these keys, the one that says protection mode, should be set to one. So go ahead and check. If yours is at zero, set this to one. And at that point, uh, there's a chance that that will uh, help it out. So let's see what else we can do. The other thing that we can also work on uh, if the protection mode's on and so forth, make sure that your firewall settings have not changed. Now, when you go into, and just you can go on the bottom, just type in firewall and go into firewall network protection, and you can basically open this up. And here you go, you've got firewalls, they're on. The first thing you should probably try is uh, turn it off, do a test, see if that helps. The other thing too is um, go and check the allow apps through firewall. One of the things that you'll notice is when you go into file, I've got a lot of stuff in here. So you have one called right here called file and share and file. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and allow these. Okay. So printer sharing file. So what I would do is turn these on and basically go ahead and click on change settings and put little check marks here and make sure that the file and print sharing and the sharing over SMB direct are both on for public and private. So try that as well to make sure that that works. Having said that, if all else fails, one of the notes that I did find in one of the forums is that you can go ahead and create um, the drives using the PowerShell. So we're back to this. Now, if you don't want to use the PowerShell, um, you, we could create a batch file. So this is more permanent or something that you could just click on in the future. And the way you would do this is literally just go to the back here, just click on new. We're going to create a text file for now, and we're going to call it network drives and use dot bat. Okay, some of you out there who are more technical are probably going to complain to me I should be using a dot CMD or should you be using uh, programming scripts or yes, there are various ways of doing it. I'm trying to keep this as easy as possible. So what I would do at this point is go and edit this. And the way the script works is when you put two hash signs in front, this is basically a comment. So you could say network drive uh, mapping. And then the first thing we would want to do is the command called net use, not user, net use. And then we would basically go ahead and Okay, and we do slash delete. So what that does is it will remove whatever is on there right now. And then you could then go and say, okay, use and we'll give it a, a letter. So for example, I had a P before and then I would have to put at this point my server. So in my case, it was let's say NAS ISO. And then you would do a slash user and then I would type in my username here. So I'm gonna put username and my password. Now, if I do it this way, it's not going to be permanent. And to execute it, you simply go back and press on it. So when I'm done, I just save it. Make sure, of course, that it is not a text file at the end. Make sure that uh, if you uh, want, you can go and uh, make sure that when you view it, you can see the extensions so that you don't end up with a dot bat dot text, in which case it will not run. So that's a little trick there. And uh, that's what it would look like. Now, after running this, what it would do is it would automatically re-add the P drive to, uh, well, in, in my case, it, I'd see it right there. So, and that should about do it. Now, one of the things that I did find with this bug or wherever this came from, I imagine it's a Windows update bug, is that by actually setting the drive letter through a script or through a command, as opposed to right clicking here and saying map drive, it stayed and it fixed a problem. So you literally could go into the PowerShell and type in net use P drive and so forth, and then send it to where you, you want. Uh, putting it there seems to have worked for the client that I did earlier. So go ahead and try that. Uh, I believe that that is the resolution to this, but I've given you more than one way to tackle this problem should you be having it. 
So hopefully that helps. There are lots of great sites out there as well that tackle these things. You can visit us at www.ctobob.com where I usually put uh, some articles and things that might help you on there as well. And of course, you can put comments below. We really appreciate those. So thanks for watching. I'm Bob Pellerin. I hope this helped and see you in the next video. Bye.